Now, when we talk about literature, we say this is a slice of life, because literature is a slice of life. It gives you the flavor, the, the scenery, the images, the characters, the psychological depth of the characters, uh, the surroundings, the flavor, the noise, the voices, the sounds, uh, the beauty, the ugliness. It, it crystallizes life for you. Okay. Because it's bad, the situation is bad, I don't want them to be stuck here. Maybe, maybe a curfew might take place any moment. Nobody knows. So it's better if, you, if they leave. Okay, uh, now, uh, talking about uh, what? Um, <coughs> Are you trying to interact with all the different factions in the center, and how are you trying to break, build bridges over the different factions that are right now a part of the Palestinian struggle? Mm. I myself is an independent person, but uh, as you can see from my writings, I'm very politicized. What I mean by independent is that I'm not uh, particularly related uh, organizationally to any political faction. And as a feminist, I believe that uh, uh, feminism has to be, uh, has, should not be a privilege to any particular faction or to any particular political group. And since, uh, since we opened this uh, uh, center, we made it a, a policy. This is the basis of our policy, that we are not biased or prejudiced against any faction. It's open to everybody, and uh, we have representatives from all the different committees. And even religious women, we have a number of religious women. We, uh, we extend our hands even to Muslim uh, sisters. We uh, ask them to come and participate, uh, do things with us. They don't like it because it's not their, their way of doing things, but we are ready to participate, to cooperate, coordinate with any faction, with any uh, uh, background, even this, of course, includes women uh, from different cultures, from different uh, uh, political or social or cultural backgrounds. So um, I believe that uh, uh, feminism should be a, a bliss to everybody. I mean, it's, it's like knowledge. You cannot just keep it to yourself. It's our duty, it's our responsibility to spread it wherever we go to, to share it, to share it with everybody. It shouldn't be some kind of, uh, uh, what is it, uh, manipulation or... Uh, it should be distributed, a privilege it should, it should be distributed uh, equally to everybody, to be shared with everybody. So this is uh, our policy. This is what I believe. Um, could you talk a little bit about the direction your writing has taken? Say, Wild Thorns was published in eight, was it 80? In 76. It was published in 76. And I haven't read anything more recent, but I've heard that your writing has become a little more directed at women, and particularly right. women's issues. Right. Right. Um, could you talk a little bit about that, and also the political effect that you think literature and writing 
can have within Palestinian society? Okay. Uh, when I started writing, uh, I started uh, as um, just a second. بس بالله ما تعلو صوتكم عشان نقدر نحكي ويطلع الصوت واضح نعم. آه الله يخليك صوتك دائما بيطلع وبيغطي على السماء. You see, when 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 I started, I started imitating men. I just wanted to be successful uh, as a writer, like men. And when I uh, wrote uh, uh, Wild Thorns, the publisher who refused it, who rejected it in uh, Egypt, he said, one of the main reasons why I don't like this novel and I don't want to publish it, because it does not have a woman's identity. I said, what do you mean? He said, if I put my finger like this on the, on the name, nobody would know that this is a novel written by a woman. And maybe that was true uh, to a certain extent, to a big extent. That was true. I wanted to be as successful in portraying the problems, the suffering of my people like a man because women usually have been portraying their own sufferings as women. And I wanted to prove that as a woman, I can do the same thing and even better. And in fact, that was the first, the first novel that came out of, uh, of, uh, under occupation. Later on, when other writers, male writers, even important writers, much, much more important than me, wrote anything about this area that was after uh, Wild Thorns. So I made it. I made it. And in fact, this, this uh, novel brought me my reputation as a writer, uh, maybe because nobody could guess that this was a woman, or maybe because that was something astonishing or something uh, exciting or something uh, exotic that a woman, especially an Arab Muslim woman, is writing like men. Then in, in the year 80, between 76, when I published Wild Thorns, and the year 80, when I published uh, Sunflower, uh, there was a period where I could experiment uh, uh, and uh, test my ideas, test my my, um, my findings in life. And I found out that uh, a very basic and drastic element of why we keep <clears throat> being so restricted, mentally restricted, economically restricted, socially, uh, internationally, whatever, our energy is within <clears throat> A very limited frame, and it, it's. Just a moment. <laughs> Our energy is uh, uh, engulfed, or it's uh, it's uh, imprisoned within a small area, and does not grow and grow. Why? Because there is a basic, basic factor that's missing. And this basic factor within this equation, social political equation, is missing women. Missing women as participants, as a, a, as a dynamic factor in society, in social and political life. Secondly, this is one uh, important uh, Finding and the second finding is that I I found out that uh, since we are uh, a revolution, since we are uh, a movement, a liberating movement, we have to uh, be to to apply uh, our beliefs and be uh, honest to our beliefs in fulfilling the needs of our beliefs and not just. Uh, having slogans, raising slogans. And one of these beliefs is uh, 
liberating everybody and not just men, liberating every part of our nation. And of course, liberation, uh, liberation involves all different uh, types and all different factions of society. Also liberating children, also liberating old age people, also liberating whatever sections or factions. But women have to be given a very, very important uh, focus. We have to focus on women. Uh, because of the many aspects of our cultures, uh, of our culture, the inhibitions of our culture, the stereotype that uh, 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 by which uh, Muslim Arab women have been labeled all through these ages. So I started shifting, uh, reading more, 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 until I became really a feminist. When I became really a feminist, I uh, wrote Sunflower. And at that time, it uh, even, not even, leftist men were very angry with me. Really, really angry. <laughs> and all those critics who have written anything and mostly uh, uh, bad, bad reviews, very biased reviews, um, saying that I'm a male hater, I, I try to convince all women to, to divorce their husbands the way I divorced my husband, that I'm a senseless, insensitive woman, that I try to, to divide the, the national front, that all these things, bad things, which are usually everywhere in all women's movements, in all feminist movements, uh, women, uh, especially those who start something, women pioneers, usually face. So I faced all these. In fact, there was a progressive uh, a magazine that used to be very fond of me and always, always uh, published something for me, about me, my pictures, everything. After publishing this novel, they stopped and talking what I, um, I talk about, I mean, uh, trying to, to discuss my views. They uh, reviewed my novel in a bad way, and they stopped publishing anything for me or about me for five years. That was some kind of boycotting and punishing me for becoming a feminist. And in fact, I, I experienced this type of communication with my colleagues, with leftists, especially leftist men, and women too, mm -hmm. uh, for, for quite a while. And I kept going on. It was very tough, but um, <clears throat> you feel you are uh, being sentenced. But why? Because you know better, all right? This is, it's, it's true, you know better. I know, I used to know better. And the proof that I knew better, that later on they all shifted and became, uh, they, they started talking like me, uh, theorizing like me about women, uh, mentioning the same points which we used to clash upon. And all the writings, now you, you, you see that I'm uh, in fact mild in comparison with what, they, with, with what the new generation of younger writers and younger women talk about, and the leftist men talk about. I am considered now a mild person, but since I have been uh, known with the reputation of uh, you know, uh, <coughs> being a vehement uh, feminist, still I keep uh, dragging with this label. But uh, now they understand that I'm not against the tide, I am with the tide, and in fact, without, without their protection, protection, and I mean it, without their protection, without their support, without their assistance, I wouldn't have been able to open this center. It's with male money. This center has been opened with Palestinian, <clears throat> Male money, it's not female, because females do not own a lot of money. It's male money. So you, you see, this is what proves that what we have been talking and discussing in the, at the beginning, and which they did not like, now they are paying money for it. 
So, <laughs> you can uh, please. Uh, I don't like it to be put in the same uh, glamorous media manner that all Palestinian women are heroes. This is not, not true. It's not. Are he hero wins. Hero wins. Bullshit. They are not. We are not. We are still facing lots of troubles, problems, pro prohibitions. We are challenging, facing, face, facing lots of challenging challenges, especially with the fundamentalist movement now, with all sorts of things. What's this gulp? Stupid thing. It's also, it adds to our burdens. We are facing unbelievable, uh, unbelievable challenging uh, challenges, and yet we are still on our feet. We are trying to, to move forward rather than backward. It's true that the feminist, uh, the women's, not feminist, the women's movement has deteriorated in comparison to the first or second year of Intifada. The women's movement, I mean the spontaneous women's movement, but for the feminist movement, it's growing. And there is a difference when we talk about the women's movement, and this, of course, it involves all young, uh, all young and old educated and uneducated uh, women with consciousness or unconsciousness, just women who poured into the streets, the spontaneous, and the feminist, which is the institutionalized, organized, growing, planning, uh, spreading horizontally or even perpendicular. Hillary, how old Vertically. Vertically. Vertically, yes. Vertically. It's growing. It's deepening. It's uh, having more ability to move within, the, within society because we are learning to, uh, to maneuver. We are learning to move in a maneuvering way, in a more po uh, diplomatic way, trying to have more friends rather than to have more clashes and more enemies, uh, try to go around things rather than just to go directly and knock, you, uh, knock our heads uh, on the wall. We can be cunning now. We are learning how to become cunning. We are learning how to become diplomatic. So we are learning. And this, this type of, uh, uh, of the women's movement, which is the feminist movement, it's growing. It's, uh, it's rising, and uh, it's going forward. So there is some kind of development, social development. Uh, and one of the most important developments is that I don't look at women in the same, uh, po very uh, naively positive manner, like uh, a media person or some kind of researcher who is coming just to, um, to make some kind of conscience cleaning or cleansing the conscience, you know, the white conscience. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> with the big problem with the white conscience. With the white conscience. Uh, because they, sometimes they fall into the trap uh, and become, uh, they bring uh, results which are not scientific on one hand and do not uh, give uh, good results on the other hand. Let me give you an example. All those uh, media people or researchers who came at the beginning of the Intifada and described uh, the Palestinian people and especially Palestinian women being so like heroines like Jeanne d'Arc and so on, when they published all those articles outside, and uh, whether in the Arab world or in the foreign uh, Western world, then you know what happened? What happened is that whenever we asked for donations or we asked for uh, social, political, or whatever kind of assistance, especially uh, financial assistance, 
uh, we used to to be uh, we used to um, to receive replies like this but you are doing great why are you keeping nagging why you keep nagging asking for more assistance since you are doing great we have been seeing you on tv we have been reading a lot of articles about you you are doing a great job much much better than what we are doing in america or what we are doing in australia for goodness sake we are starving we are we have we, we were passing a period of starvation real practical starvation and when we asked for donations or assistance this is these are the replies which we 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 used to receive that we have read about you great things and you are doing fine doing a great job so what do you need the, the donations for so this is practical i mean the practical results which we uh, which we used to to receive from all those uh, uh, media uh, uh, or articles or or lights uh, and secondly it's not scientific it's not true it's not true because uh, during that period when all women were in the streets and I mean it all women were in the streets young women old women everybody were in the streets uh, still they were in the streets and traditions and inhibitions were inside and being in the street does not prove that we have improved drastically does not so on the scientific level it's not true the presentation of our image was not true and all, this is also the opposite extreme of drawing us or showing us as the terrorists or the Muslim woman with the veil who does not have a mind or intellect or does not understand uh, that there is, there is a country called America or Australia or Europe. Of course, putting us in stereotypes like this, being a Muslim uh, woman with a veil or a Palestinian terrorist or a Palestinian heroine, I believe that this is all not acceptable. Mm -hmm. We are human beings. We are different types of women. You find in our society the educated, the uneducated, the illiterate. You find a, a woman, in a, a professor at the university. You find a woman activist. You find a woman politician. And you find a woman, a battered wife, a woman with a veil, a woman who is um, uh, delivering a child each single year. You find all sorts of women. And in general, for me, now there is, of course, this uh, trying to divide or to understand society according to the different segments or different uh, categories of women. But as a whole, I don't like uh, this situation. And that's why I'm working, I'm fighting to change it. I give my life to it, to change it, whether through writing or through working for this institution. And now here, what <clears throat> your second question fits. How do you think my writing or writing literature changes? I believe that uh, 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 literature, or the way the school of literature, which I uh, categorize myself uh, in, <clears throat> the committed uh, social uh, politicized type of literature, I believe it has an immense impact on, um, on the reader <clears throat> on two levels. First, intellectually, it makes the reader uh, um, able to see the situation Though it is fictionalized situation, but it's a part of life. Now, when we talk about literature, we say this is a slice of life, because literature is a slice of life. It gives you the flavor, 
the, the scenery, the images, the characters, the psychological depth of the characters, uh, the surroundings, the flavor, the noise, the voices, the sounds, uh, the beauty, the ugliness, it, it crystallizes life for you. It's different than reading a, a sociological or anthropological work. Uh, maybe anthropology does that too. In a, but it's not uh, uh, emotionally, um, what is it, involving. Mm -hmm. Literature has this dimension that it is, it makes the reader uh, gets emotionally involved. And of course, as human beings, we cannot but consider how emotions are very important factor in directing the attention uh, and the focus of a human being to a particular uh, point of view. So I believe that literature has the importance of both, of art, visual art, and at the same time, uh, scientific uh, research, what is it, uh, social sciences work. From the reactions which I've received from the readers of my novels, uh, I believe that um, I've given something, documented something about my, uh, my people, myself as an individual, myself as a Palestinian citizen, uh, and not presenting the situation as it is. I also criticize the situation as it is and propagate for a situation which I would like it to prevail in the future. So here, in this sense, I play the role of a social scientist, an artist, and at the same time, a theoretician. Mm -hmm. I play this game. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a game. For me, it's, a, uh, it's fulfilling. Emotionally, it's fulfilling. Uh, and at the same time, uh, it's like playing things. I mean, um, uh, it's having fun. I have fun with my work. Uh, sometimes, of course, I have uh, difficulty, especially when, when I portray the situation of a character who is passing a very, uh, a very um, uh, awful experience, an awful experience. Of course, I feel, I feel the situation. I, uh, I internalize it. Sometimes I cry while... Uh, while writing it, but uh, at the same time, I love putting things together. I mean, the, the, the art of montaging, putting parts together. Like, in, in real life, this is the difference, you know? In real life, you meet somebody who is interesting. And if you are a person who likes to, 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 to collect uh, uh, nice things or to collect um, precious things, you would think, oh, I wish I can keep this person in, in my museum, in the museum of my memory, in a museum where I can keep this character alive, all right? Sometimes, of course, it used to occur to me like this, but now I keep all these people alive in my museum, which is my novels. See? It's like collecting precious things and keeping them in your own museum. It's fun. It's great. It's a privilege, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, and at the same time, suppose you meet this person, the exciting or interesting person, uh, in the year 70. And then you meet another a character or a person who is as interesting and as exciting in the year 90. And then you start calculating, ah, it would have been great if I put these two characters together, right? But of course, you cannot do it in real life 
but you can do it in fiction. So I dig in my memory, which is my museum, bring the character back from the past and put it together with the person I meet in the year 90 and let them have a dialogue and watch them as a writer. And I watch them and have fun the way they interact and the way they communicate. And I do this too with people coming from different cultures, like uh, a person coming from America or a person, a Palestinian woman, having an affair in America or having a, a boyfriend or a lover in a different culture. I do that. I, I have fun with it. And I'm sure you, you all would like to do that. <laughs> so we don't have the skills to do that. <laughs> Let me ask you just one last question. Uh, how do you differentiate between uh, the work that your center does versus uh, the work of a lot of centers which are, for example, uh, they would consider themselves women's committees uh, who uh, provide... Here? Committees here? Here in other parts, Ramallah and uh, other parts of West Bank and Gaza, where they're providing <coughs> uh, child care and uh, you know, other kinds of programs, embroidery programs and so on. How do you distinguish between the two in your own mind and your own political outlook? Well, they produce what's needed for day-to-day -day life, maybe. They produce ordinary women. They produce uh, ordinary projects. But here is a factory, or this is how I have it here in my mind. This is the factory where women leaders have to be produced. We are working on this, and so far we have been doing a great job. Women here are changing regularly from day to day, from month to month. They, they witness it, they notice it, and their committees notice it. And later on, after a few years, you will have not just one novelist, not just one writer. You will have plenty of writers. We'll produce writers. We'll produce theoreticians, we'll produce women leaders, whether in politics or literature or social sciences. Here is the, my dream is, to, it's not just a dream, my work, my duty is to reproduce myself and other women who, has been, who have been committed to roles that were not uh, not being, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, it wasn't easy to, to achieve it. I mean, I had to have special, uh, special atmosphere, special experiences in order to have the right uh, moment or the right experience, uh, the right skills to be able to be where I am. And I know it has been very difficult. It was very difficult for me. Now, I will make it less difficult for other women by providing them with all that's needed for a woman to become a writer, to become whatever, but to become somebody who has got a, a place and a prestigious place in society. This I will do, and I'm doing and if I will have enough life, you will see. After a few years, you will come back and you will see. There will be at least 10 young women who will be all writers and very active in society. You see, and I noticed from my experience that becoming a writer does not only need a gift. It needs a little bit of gift, but it needs also planning, patience and skill. It's not an inspiration like what the romantics used to, to describe. It's something you, you work at it, you develop it. It's a skill. You work at it day and night. And you try to, 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 to pave the way for this um, achievement or 
for, for this dream to grow by trying to, to let all the parts of your life fit into this or uh, lead you to this way rather than to, to stop you or to stand in your way. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Can I, can I ask you one last question? Yeah. Uh, this is unrelated to women necessarily or in particular, but on this trip we have seen the settlements growing and growing and the land confiscation increasing and we, we are worried that uh, the Palestinian people are being cornered in a way that we didn't quite understand uh, before this trip with almost 65% of the land taken. Um, what changes will this make in the way people live here and the way the struggle is conducted here, this increasing taking of land and populating of the territories with Israelis and colonizers? Could you comment we'll have, on this question? We will have more political problems. And uh, I think that if a solution uh, is not on the way, I hope it is on the way, and uh, each part, like the Palestinian part or the, the, the Israeli part, knows exactly its limitations, its rights and its duties, its responsibilities towards not <clears throat> towards its nation, but also to, to the international community. I'm afraid we will have more wars, more bloodshed, and uh, it's true that the Arab world is still divided, is divided now, is in, in the worst condition now. But we cannot bet that the Middle East will continue as it is, because it has been like this, ups and downs all the way, all through the ages, all, for, for many, many, many years. So uh, the American, uh, the American, uh, American politicians now in power, they cannot recon on the situation in the Middle East as it is. And I believe they are clever enough that they can see far into the future that they cannot, uh, uh, they cannot rely on the situation to, to, to stay as it is. And that's why they want to do, to make the solution right now where, while we are in our weakest positions. And also for the Israelis, they cannot recon on this. They cannot. Uh, and also that's why they want to buy more time because they want to make new realities, which of course leads to the to the, the question, back to your question, that we are pushed in a corner more and more, squeezed more and more, and of course this will lead to more and more problems, more and more bloodshed, and more and more instability in the whole area, not just between the Palestinians and the Israelis. We will have more coup d'etats in the Arab world. You will see. We will, we will be here to, to witness, if we are here to witness. But there will be more coup d'etats, more uh, instability, more ups and downs, more bloodshed, more wars, and more everything that's bad. And uh, we will be the, the first direct victim to this as Palestinians. Uh, we will suffer not having enough water, not having enough uh, land, uh, a very big percentage of unemployment, especially uh, what happened, uh, the, the third immigration from Kuwait, the Palestinian immigration from Kuwait. Uh, the percentage of the un un unemployment will rise. We will have more poverty. And it started already since the beginning of Intifada. And after the Gulf War, it has been rising and rising and rising. And now God knows where it will stop. It will not stop. And of course, the, the more you have poverty, the more you will have uncertain instability and uh, restlessness. And this, I can promise, we will have if we will not have a solution to the problem. More instability and more restlessness. The Israelis will not enjoy it. No way.